Sound Sleuth Lab. Testing one, two, check. Ambisonic microphones, or sound field mics, have been around since the 1970s, and I've always wanted one. This build is the culmination of several attempts and experimentation that finally yielded what I wanted. My first build was with TSB-165 capsules and a BM-900 body. And I also used an op-amp circuit and, well, I hung a 9-volt battery off the side of it. Yeah, this one isn't ready for prime time. And it used 7-pin XLR connectors, which is another challenge. Then I discovered the TSB-2590. It is a 1-inch capsule and it's really good. I talked Tom B into doing a 3D printable capsule holder for it, and this was the first mic with it. The challenge was, and as you can see, it's too big for a head basket. Well, so I went without one, good enough to prove that it all worked and for me to get the color coding correct finally, but also not ready for prime time. Next up was the first of the all-in-one capsule holder and ball. This was the genesis of the Ambi Alice, the one that we're going to build today. We added capsule labels to the holder for ease of identification, and we also labeled the body as well. The only problem is with wind protection added, you can't see the labeling. And the front arrow is hidden when you're behind the microphone. A few updates and here's our final one. This is the GoPro camera tripod mount one with a quarter 20 threads. A benefit here is once mounted, the orientation stays the same. We are now ready for prime time. Meet the Ambi Alice, a world-class, first-order Amazonic microphone with fantastic specifications that you can build for about a hundred bucks. The housing for the Ambi Alice is 3D printed. You can either print it yourself from the included .stl files or order from Shapeways. Please see the instructable for all the details. First up are the capsules. These are in the required position to form a tetrahedral array. Holding them in place is the capsule holder. The capsule holder is labeled for each of the four tetrahedral positions in space, and honestly, this one bears repeating. Keeping track of this is the hardest part of ambisonics. For every build I do, I use a dot of color paint to help me keep track of them, and I also color code the wires and the XLR connectors. The capsules will mount in this with a small dab of glue to hold them in place. There are spots for the wires to clip in as well, providing for good cable management. Tom came up with a great solution for vibration dampening and a bit of isolation. We're using four silicon rubber things that are normally used for drone camera gimbals. Amazon sells them in a bag pretty inexpensively. And these are gonna kinda pop into the capsule holder and then fit into the two separate housing halves, holding the capsule holder in place while providing some isolation. The bottom housing has two variations available. One is for use with a short section of half-inch PVC pipe, and that one will give you a traditional style microphone, and the second has the ability to bolt a quarter 20 bolt or nut in it, allowing you to use either cold shoe adapters or GoPro style mounts. Mounting the microphone on the helmet while shredding downhill really isn't the idea here, but these do make it really easy to build some really cool microphone arrays. More on that later in the Instructable. Both bottom housings have wire passages for the Mogami wire we're using. The mic stand version feeds straight through and the GoPro mount version brings the wires out on the side while still allowing them to feed out of the bottom if necessary. And there's also a separate side piece to the bottom mount for the GoPro version that goes together with some M3 machine screws and nuts and this kind of clamps the wires in place and holds it all together. The mic stand version has a separate bottom clamp assembly for the base of the PVC pipe, and that one also uses machine screws to hold it together. Now that we have this part, let's move on to building the full microphone. Here are the parts. Four capsules, four rubber bumper grommet things, a 3D printed housing and case, some Mogami wire, multicolored sleeving, four male XLR connectors with red, yellow, green, and blue boots, and the same colors of tape. Let's prep the capsule wire end. I like to use a razor blade to trim the sleeve. Then cut off the copper shield. We will connect that on the XLR end for shielding. Then we want to trim the red wire and strip back just a little bit while stripping more from the white wire. Now let's tin them. Yeah, we're going to need more solder on the white wire. The white one is going to connect both the source and ground connections on the capsule. 
Size it up and trim so we can connect both the S and the G. Now solder that one on first. Now reach the red one over and connect it to D or drain. The key here is keeping track of the four capsules. Color coding. Wire up the other three capsules. Then individually color code the far end of the wire as we feed them through the capsule holder and glue them in. We're using E6000 glue as it is perfect for this. It can be removed later if needed. Apply a little to three or four spots around the capsules. And then wipe off any excess as you go. Yeah, I know this looks sloppy. A, I'm using a macro lens, and B, it is a bit messy. As the E6000 dries, you can easily wipe off any excess and it will peel right off. As you feed the wires through, pay attention to the wire clips. These are on the bottom of the holder and will pass the wires through the bottom basket assembly. Okay, here we go. All four are glued in and they are as flush as possible with the capsule holder. Now onto the rubber gimbal mounts we are using. These kind of just twist into the holes and pop into place. A little rotation helps. After all four are in, it is time to put the capsule assembly into the bottom basket. Note that this is labeled B and F. The red and yellow capsules are front and the blue and green are back. You'll need to take the color tape off as you feed each one through. Put it back on right after you get the wire through. Once assembled, it is really difficult to track down where each wire goes. So let's, let's get this one right now. Once all four are through, check that they are pressed into the wire clips on the capsule holder and that things can move around a bit. Now lower the capsule assembly onto the bottom basket. The rubber gimbal mounts will mate up with the holes in the basket and you may have to seat each one just to get them all into place. All right, let's glue on the basket top. First, fit it into place so you can tell how it will go. Then on the little flat sections, apply some E6000 glue. Hold the basket halves together with some small clamps. I use paper clips. After the glue dries in a few hours, we're going to dress up the wires with colored sleeving and wire up the XLR connectors. Cut the sleeving about an inch longer than needed. I made this one with pretty short wires as it will mount near my recorder. Now the fun part, push the wire onto the sleeving. You need to hold one end tight and then push more sleeving on. As it bunches outward, then squeeze down on that end you are pushing from and release the other end and it'll just pop over. After each foot or so you need to push the excess down towards the mic body. After all four wires have colored sleeving on them, put the XLR boots on now. Nothing sucks more than soldering a connector on and realizing you forgot the boot. Okay, now we need to fit the connector cover on. This is the GoPro mount build so the wires have space for them and then we put the other half on which will clamp onto the wires as we do final assembly. For this one, I'm using a quarter 20 stainless steel bolt. You can also use a quarter 20 nut if you want. Either one will work. It really depends on your workflow and how you want to mount it. Carefully slide the connector half up and make sure you're not pinching any wires between the flat spots on the halves. Connect them with five 10 millimeter long M3 screws and nuts. Look everything over and if needed, push the wire back into the little retaining clips. Now on to the electronics. We're using the simple P48 circuit here, one capacitor and one resistor. In our case, a 3.3 microfarad capacitor and a 100K ohm resistor. See my PZM mic instructable for a full explanation of how this circuit works. For the TSB2590 capsule we're using, the FET needs a 100K resistor for proper bias, which is a different value than the PZM instructable. 
Both components are going to mount right on the XLR jack, so little prep work is needed. Bend the negative lead on the capacitor back along the side and twist it with the resistor as shown. We're going to need four of these. Now solder the twisted part and trim just below the height of the capacitor. Here are the four finished pieces. Now we need to tin the XLR connector prior to soldering in the resistor and capacitor. The resistor end goes to pin 1 and the capacitor lead to pin 2. Similar to the wire prep at the capsule end, strip back about a centimeter and twist off the shield. Okay, the red wire goes to pin 3. The shield goes to pin 1 and this will actually provide shielding for the entire cable and is only connected at this end. The white wire goes to the resistor capacitor junction. Insulate this with a small piece of tape. I had one not insulated touch the metal shell of the XLR and guess what, the mic didn't work. Okay, let's assemble the XLR shell. Put on the plastic insert. Now carefully stuff the capacitor resistor assembly inside and then push on the shell and screw on the boot. One down and three more to go. Okay, first step, let's turn on the zoom recorder and we need to go into some of the menu settings and make sure that we're all set up here. All right, when it powers up, there's the main screen. I'm already set up for Amazonic recording, but we're gonna go and check that. So you need to go to the input menu. Once we get into the input menu, we need to go into uh, link settings, and that's how we're gonna tie channels one through four together. All right, so we get into the input link, select that again. I'm already set here, so see the little blue box around the Amazonics? Um, that's how you would do that. If we press any of these buttons in here, we get out of it. So let's go to the Ambisonic settings and make sure we are set to Ambisonic A mode. And what Ambisonic A mode does is discreetly record each capsule separately onto its own track. And then we can encode it properly in Reaper later. So we are in Ambisonic's A mode. Uh, let's just look at the other settings that you have. Fumon, AmbiX, we don't want those. That will have the zoom recorder encode for us. Then we also need to go into the phantom settings and make sure that we have 48 volt phantom power turned on. I like to keep the power saving mode off myself because I'm running on a big battery pack or run for a long time. All right, the next part of this is connecting it to the zoom. So we have four channels connected. We have the red, yellow, green, and blue connected to channels one, two, three, and four. Okay, we're going to process everything in Reaper. Reaper is a fantastic program. I'm just scratching the depths of what it can do. So we want to add a track. That's going to be our Ambi Encode track. We can also double click in here and add another track. We're going to name the first one Ambi Encode and then the second one Ambi Decode. By default, Reaper makes these tracks stereo. So we're going to have to go fix that and adjust where things are being sent to. So once we get the labeling right, we're gonna go back up to the Ambi Encode track and click the routing button. So by default, this is stereo. We really need to increase the track channels to four, so we do that there. Um, and then we don't wanna send this to the master send bus because we're gonna encode it and then send it to the Ambi Decode. So let's close that and we'll get down to um, the Ambi Decode, set that up for routing. Once again, by default, it's two channels, we need four. Um, so we get that set up. We do want this to go to the master send bus. And now that we've got that set up, notice that that is in red up there. That's because we're not sending it anywhere. Master send is off, so we need to add a new send. Send it to Ambi Decode. Now, once again, you got to set this to four channels or multi-channel or it won't work right. All right, so now we've got that set up. Um, now we need to go add some encoding and decoding plugins. For the encoder, we're going to go back up here, press on effects to get into the effects, and then search for VV and then VV encode. By default, this shows up as FUMA. We need to set it to AMBX or it won't work right. I already have calibrations in here. So for you, 
First time you do it, go to find calibrations, go to where you downloaded them, and then click on the calibration folder for the filter matrices, select all three, and then click open. It may crash, you may have to reopen it again. Um, you can add them one at a time if you want. And then name it, I've already got it named there, so we're good, you'll need to save that and name it. Now we're gonna go in and add the Sparta plugin. This one is Array to Spherical Harmonics, Array 2SH, click on that. Interestingly, there's some defaults in here. We need to select um, the, the right one. You can either select Core Sound Tetra Mic or the Sound Field Mic. The geometries are about the same. Um, click this button here to turn them into degrees because right now it's radians, so click that. And then you've got on the azimuth, which is around it, 45, minus 45, 135, minus 135 to get you around the circle. And then up and down, the elevations are plus 35 and minus 35 degrees approximately. I would have thought they were 45. I messed that up when I first started doing this. 20 millimeter radius is actually on par with, with the ambialysis construction and geometry. Now we go over here. Um, I just keep the filters set to the original, what they're defaulting to. ACN is channel order, that's AMBX, that's what we want. The normalization is standardized, that's what we want. Uh, spherical array and it's open cardioid capsules. So there you go, that one's good to go. We're gonna actually select VVN code and then deselect the array to SH. You can go back and play with those, see what they sound like. Now let's start adding some decoding. So from the Sparta, we're gonna add the binaural decoder and then the beamformer. These the beamformer is really, really cool. Um, you're going to play with this for hours. I guarantee it. All right. So right now, if we listen to just the beam former, um, you're going to only have one output. So it's going to come from the right or left channel, depending on how your audio is set up. We need to add another one. And then we're going to actually turn this into RTF. So we're going to add another one. So we've got two beams and then we're going to tell it that one beam is, is uh, plus 55 degrees, which is half of RTF. And the other one is minus 55 degrees, which gives us our, our, our RTF. And then I don't know why this is defaulted to minus 14 uh, for an elevation, but we're going to make that back to zero. So this will sound like perfect RTF. Feel free to play with it when you get some audio in there. Um, and then back to the binaural one, um, select that, turn off the beamformer. Um, you need to click enable or it won't rotate around. Um, there's plenty you can do with this. I'm not going to get into it at this point. I like to use diff diffuse field EQ. Um, to me, that works really well. And now let's add an, uh, another one in here. Let's add in another binaural decoder. This one's from Ambisonic Toolkit. Um, this one's really cool because it has all of those um, HRTFs um, default in it so you can play around with those and see what you get so we go to pick an htrtf and there's a photo of what it looks like so this one's kind of cool and what i did for me is find the one that looks like my ear um, as far as the acoustics of that go and then i just listen to a bunch of different ones which feel free to do it's really really cool it's you know to me it's it's amazing what you can do with all this okay this is all i'm going to do at this point and now we're going to go and try and um bring some audio in just so you know how that works. So I'm gonna slide some audio over here and this is already recorded. So the Zoom puts out a four channel wave file, tracks one through four. So what we're gonna do with that one is drag it over into the Ambi encode and you'll kind of see the four tracks show up in there. Um, kind of cool. And then, um, you, you know, adjust levels and all that. Um, that it does record 32 bit floats, so you, you may have to adjust them a, a couple things. Now, the other thing we want to do is be able to save this as a template so that you don't have to just do what you did all over again. So, go to save it as a template. Um, I'm just going to call this one test. That's where I have all the rest of my project templates um, going on. And then, now if you open, um, open it back up and go to project templates and bring one in, you'll get it. I'm going to go to another one I've set up before for ambient code and decode. This one has some outriggers associated with it. Actually, no, oop, this one doesn't. This is the previous one I've done. Let's grab one for this. This will have the outriggers I've set up before for left and right. Um, and it's, you know, kind of set up as we have before. I will include all those templates in the instructable. So feel free to play around with it. There you go. That's Reaper. All right. There's no way I could cover everything that you can do with this microphone in just one instructable. So I will follow this up with an advanced use case one. Biggest thing off the top of my head is to use this as a center microphone in an array. You will get fantastic results if you do that. 
I've included some audio files in the Instructable of some location sound plus a choir performance. Feel free to download those and play around with them and learn how to use Reaper with them. And then uh, actually go build the microphone and see what you can record as well. And if you do, please let me know below in the comments. Shout out to Tom Benedict who designed the 3D CAD housing and assembly for the microphone three or four iterations into it so thank you Tom really appreciate it and a shout out to David McGriffey sent him one of these microphones and he sent me back some calibration files so um, he was very influential in making this whole thing happen so thank you to David McGriffey and then if you enjoy this Instructable please subscribe to my channel on Instructables and if you build it let us know below thanks and have a great day